This is Casper Van Dien, and you're listening to the Horror Squad Podcast. You know what to do! Kill them all! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Horror Squad Podcast. This is episode number 344, where tonight we are going to be talking about Alien Romulus. Brand new, fresh out the theater release, of course, directed by Fede Alvarez. I am here, of course, as always, with Steve and Todd. Gentlemen, Hi. what's new? Hi. How are you? Fantastic. How are uh, you? Okay. In a matter of uh, hours after this recording, I'm going to go see... Four line in 3D. It's uh, currently in theaters, I think, for the week. So if you guys haven't seen that movie, it's awesome. I highly recommend it. And I've never seen it in 3D before. So I am excited. Yes. Speaking of that, Sam and I went on Thursday to see that, which was awesome. Never saw it in 3D before. Actually, last year was the first time I ever saw it, for those of you who have been listening to the podcast for a while. Great movie. A lot of fun. You know, just as cool in 3D. Uh, Sam dressed as Coraline. For the movie, because Leica, oh, yeah, Leica gave her free, Leica's the studio that created Coraline, and they gave her free passes to the movie, so she did sort of, and they sent her like a really cool promo box and stuff. You can go see that over on her YouTube channel if you want to check it out, uh, Halloween Happy, for those of you that don't know. But yeah, we had a fun, it's a fun time, and I make an appearance, it's a very slight, small appearance in the vlog, if you if you want to see my ugly mug in there as well. But yeah, it was, it was a good, it was a really good time. Get out of the mirror, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's his appearance uh yeah it's, it's actually pretty cool um apparently it made as much this weekend as its original weekend when it was first released so wow. yeah it's nice to see that film getting uh, all that love now yeah our theater was completely sold out was, mm. i was not expecting that at all so that that's really cool i i guess i never really understood it had such like a, a massive fan base but that's really cool yeah, it is. And uh, just a programming note, we did say at the end of last episode that we were going to watch uh, Blade, a review Blade this episode, but we pushed it out by a week, so we'll do that next week. We just, uh, we didn't think we were all available to watch Alien Romulus over the weekend, but we did, and that's why we pushed it forward, so it's still kind of relevant in, uh, in the zeitgeist of horror out there, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Hell yes, and there will be a lot, I think, to talk about with alien romulus i did get the popcorn bucket i was very excited about that i know it's been i was not expecting it honestly because we went and saw Coraline the night before i literally made it up uh it like a thing to go and see if they had the popcorn buckets available apparently they were holding them back like and they wouldn't release them until the day uh romulus actually released on friday so when i went on friday and they had them i was pleasantly surprised so that was very cool yeah, I went Friday morning and they were sold out. Yeah, I've been Fucking hearing that scalpers. from every yeah, right? I've been hearing that from everybody. I really wanted the the Xenomorph one, which I think was the coolest one they did, but the one I got was pretty cool too. The one I got had it's like a, you know, a tin bucket and it has the face hugger sort of crawling up the side of it. It's pretty cool. So are your popcorn bucket collections getting uh, pretty big now? It's uh it seems like every movie has cool popcorn buckets, so right. at some point it's just like where do you stop, you know? Yeah, I I mean, if Beetlejuice has one, I'll probably get it. I, it I'm not. I don't. I, it does. Yeah, they have a few. I don't know which one AMC is getting. I guess I'll find out when that happens. But uh, no, man, I'm all for it because to me they're promo items. So like anything to do with like promo items, I love. And like in 20 years or something, they're gonna be like super hard to find and collectible. So I, I, I dig them. I'm down for them. Awesome. All right. I did have a it's just a bunch of halloween update but i will save that for what watch because i only watch one movie this week so gentlemen let's move in to what watched what you've been watching this week well i like that segue it's very very good i'll talk about one i just actually was able to watch today it was a movie i backed on kickstarter or one of those things a director named jr bookwalter who was really big in like the indie scene in like the late 90s early 2000s and he actually took a 20-year hiatus and uh, was just like producing films, things like that. And he decided to make another one called Side Effects May Vary. And this is a COVID related film. So, um, you know, you're going to have your uh, anti slash pro vaccines complaints and mask wearing and all that shit. But 
the point of the film is that you get a vaccine for COVID and it turns you in, kind of into like a zombie and it's like very uh, moist and uh, sticky looking and it's a lot of like, uh, you know, bubbling blood and shit like that. And our main character gets the vaccine. He doesn't want it, but he does it for, for a loved one and he gets it and he turns into this like, you know, zombie and he goes killing people and things like that. You know, like I, I really love the practical effects and I love the gore and I love all that stuff. The problem is there's not a lot of it, right? We have a scene in the very beginning where something happens, which is really cool. But after that, it takes about 35 minutes to get to anything else. Um, and then that time we're, we're having characters that are just like, you know, talking or bullshitting or complaining about COVID, things like that. You know, I think we all think this similar about this, where it's like, we just lived through this. I don't want to have to think about that shit now, you know, maybe let's, let's talk about it in 10 years or so, but like hearing the mass complaints and the vaccine complaints and whatever you, if you're for or against, I don't really give a shit. But like hearing that in a film, like kind of sucks, right? Because I just want violent zombies taking people out. And unfortunately, that's not what we get until the very end, which the very end fucking kicks off. It's really cool. But overall, it took a little bit long to get there. That side effects may vary. I uh, I watched it on Blu-ray because I did the Kickstarter thing. And I think this will come out to Tubi sometime, but it's a 2024 release. And uh, yeah, three out of five. Cool. Before I say my next one, I'm going to once again reiterate my call to arms to our listeners. We have our 1960s episode coming up uh, real soon in a couple weeks. We're just doing, I think, two more movies after this, and then it'll be the 60s episode. So please send us your top 10 of the 1960s uh, sometime in the next two weeks so we can compile them and make a uh, ultimate list of all our listeners' uh, feedback. Really looking forward to seeing what people uh, think are the top of the 60s. And on that note, I'm continuing my kind of final push before that episode by watching stuff from the 60s. The first one that I watched, I watched over on VOD, and that is 1962's Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. So uh, this film stars Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. So uh, one of them is like a child star. She's very, very beloved. There's like creepy dolls of her and everything, and... But she's like kind of a spoiled child. Meanwhile, the other sister is more reserved and just kind of wants to live her life. And then the story takes place a little bit later where the uh, the star child is starting to get outshone by the, the other sibling, which really pisses her off. So she um, hits her with her car, which leaves her paraplegic so she can't walk anymore. And then again, years la later after that, they are now living together. The former star is um, now taking care of her, the younger sister, and she's basically keeping her captive and doesn't want her out there. She still wants to cling on that little bit of fame that she had. She wants to gain it back. She calls people in to like start a new kind of concert, thinking that she's going to be huge because she used to be a long time ago. And it has a lot of vibes of, like, Misery. I mean, I know this is way before Misery, but if, if you know Misery, it's kind of got those kinds of vibes with, like, being captive and being in a wheelchair and stuff like that. So this is one I'd heard that I should watch before doing my 60s list. And I got to say, the performances from Crawford and Davis are fucking fantastic. They are so, so good at playing off each other. You know, you have uh, Davis as the kind of older sibling who's um, really trying to cling on to fame. And then you have Crawford in the wheelchair who just wants to go out and kind of, you know, experience some stuff. And it's really good. But my issue with it, it's just way too fucking long. Uh, it's almost two hours. And I got the gist of it maybe an hour in. And anything after that started getting long-winded. And... At an hour and a half, I was just like done. You know, I was like getting bored because they weren't really introducing any new elements or anything like that. Uh, there aren't a ton of kills either. So the horror part of it is loose, I would say. But it is still a, a decent film and I'd recommend it to people who want to explore the 60s and everything like that. So I gave it three out of five stars. So that's whatever happened to Baby Jane, which I watched over on uh, VOD. All righty. I, yeah, that's one I definitely want to revisit before our 60s episode because I my mother like loved that movie and we watched it a lot growing up. So I have a lot of nostalgia for that one. So I, I'm interested to see if it holds up. 
because right currently it's in my top 10 on memory. So we'll see if it, if it stays there or not. All right. My first one tonight uh, and my only one movie wise tonight is a 2024 release. Um, this actually came up on Discord. It was recommended by uh, Creepy Kate over on our Discord and is a movie called Frogman. Now, the title alone pulled me in. I was like, oh. All right, let's let's see what this is about. Um, so then I went and looked at the synopsis, and I was like hooked instantly. Uh, so the synopsis is about um, so it is a found footage style movie uh, about a uh, a family that were they were like on vacation, you know, back in I would say like the early '90s, something like that. Uh, this the little kid, probably 10, 11 years old or whatever at the time, is uh, sort of filming his family's vacation. The car, I believe, breaks down or something like that. Uh, he gets out of the car, looks into the woods, and he sees this frog man in the woods. The footage becomes super, like, sort of locally famous, synonymous and stuff. Everyone thinks it's a big hoax and stuff like that. We now flash forward, uh, you know, 20 years later. The kid is now, um, you know, grown up. He's sort of uh, an aspiring filmmaker. Uh, but you know, none of his movies have actually taken, you know, off the ground. Most people kind of think he's a hack filmmaker and stuff like that. So his idea is to be taken seriously, is to go back to where he saw Frogman and film a documentary and try to find Frogman on footage. Will he find Frogman? Will he not? You'll have to watch the movie to find out, I guess. Overall, man. I uh I ended up really enjoying this one. Uh, this now this definitely won't be everyone's cup of tea. It's found footage. It's low budget, so you definitely have to know what you're getting into going in. But I thought the mythos sort of behind Frogman was was crazy, uh, was wild. I do think it, it's definitely a slow burn. Uh, the first two thirds is sort of uh, a lot of build up and stuff like that, and a lot of development. And at times I was even like, all right, let's kind of get on with it and stuff like that. But the third act is fucking insane. And it goes completely off the rails in a lot of ways, but in some of the best ways uh, imaginable. I, I don't think it, it did not disappoint, especially when we do get to the Frogman stuff. Um, I thought it was it was pretty dang cool. And Frogman looks awesome. There was one choice I I I could have lived without that kind of I was like all right that maybe was you know a little too far you know but that's more of a nitpick and you know the director's decision but it was some it was a choice that was made that that I didn't love but uh, overall I loved it a lot of people will think it's a Blair Witch ripoff in a lot of ways and they do actually I think it's more of a an homage in a lot of ways because they definitely pull and borrowed stuff from that movie but I think you know it was a filmmaker that probably grew up with the movie and and loved it and that's probably why he made this one so yeah i i give it a three and a half out of five i really enjoyed it i think it's a really solid entry into uh the found footage subgenre and uh, you know if you're into sort of i guess cryptozoology type stuff like and mothman and stuff like that i think frogman would be right up your alley cool all righty my last one for the night is the hills have eyes 1977 since we might be talking about the remake in a couple weeks yeah so west craven if you haven't seen it a family's going to california they get stuck on the side of the road in the desert middle of nowhere and they are hunted by mutant cannibals yeah man it's fucking great are there some slow parts here is there some goofy ass shit absolutely but man the once it kicks off like once the family is in peril and the way the mutants like separate them and their tactics and everything it's like fucking it's it's scary as hell man especially when they go into the um rv and uh, commit their you know assaults and bite off birds heads and, and all that shit it's fucking nuts and just to read like the backstory of it too like how they filmed it and all the you know trials they went through and how hot it fucking was and having real snakes get on, on set and then having a snake wrangler have to wrangle the snakes and they lose a snake and everyone goes fucking crazy things like that it's just an awesome time and i highly recommend it man hills of eyes that's over on blu-ray and I'm sure it's streaming somewhere. I just don't know. Excellent. Uh, all right. So my second one this week is a movie from 1960, and I watched it over on Tubi, and it's called Circus of Horrors. So this is a story of a plastic surgeon who does under-the-table work. He basically restores, um, like, uh, women's faces. And he takes on a very high-profile client, but he botches the surgery, which leaves her in a really bad spot. 
So the authorities want to go after him. So he escapes. And as he's driving away, he gets into a terrible crash, but he does survive. And he goes back to his friends and basically like walks him through how to, uh, to fix his face. And once his face is fixed, he realizes he looks very different. So he decides that he wants to start a new life and continue his work as a plastic surgeon. So on the road, he notices that there's a abandoned circus. And when he, he gets there, he sees that there's a girl, like a young girl who's disfigured. So he says, um, you know, I'll, I'll fix you. So take me to your dad. And he does. And the dad's like, I don't have any money. You know, my circus is abandoned and everything. He's like, I'll, I'll do it for free. And the dad's like, okay, well, I'll repay you by giving you anything you want. So he fixes her. She's, you know, she gets her beauty again. I want the daughter. No, no, thankfully. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, kind of, but anyway. That's, uh, uh, so he, he decides to give him the circus. And he says, I can turn your circus around. So he decides to fix people and then put them in a circus as these beautiful women who conduct like acrobatics and stuff like that. So the movie takes place 10 years later. He has a bunch of women who work for the circus with him and everything's going super well. His idea is that he wants to sh show people like how they go from hideous women to, to beautiful and the showcase in the circus and everything like that. But think every time a woman wants to escape the circus, he kills them because he doesn't want the secret going out that he's doing this. So that's basically kind of the horror part of this. And then the story takes place from there as people are starting to get suspicious of all the accidental deaths that happen in the circus and stuff like that. So I'd never heard of this one. I was just looking for something to watch in the 60s that was available on Tubi. And uh, it's fun. You know, I, I had a good time watching it. There's a whole lot of circus footage, which I'm not a big fan of circuses in general, just because of the way they treat animals and stuff. But it was entertaining as far as seeing it on screen. Um, they do some pretty horrible shit, though. Not a ton of kills, unfortunately, but that's kind of a thing in the 60s. It's not like now where they'll they'll go into these big, gory fine, uh, kills or anything like that. But uh, I, I would say it was entertaining enough as a film. So I would recommend it. Not anything I'd put on my top 10 or anything. So that's a Circus of Horrors. I gave it two and a half stars over on Tubi. All righty. And the last thing uh, I got tonight wasn't a movie, but I had a great weekend with Jason Marsden, a.k.a. Binks the Cat from Hocus Pocus. He came in to Salem, Massachusetts to prep for our It's Just a Bunch of Halloween weekend. Uh, yeah, it was a great time. We met, we had a bunch of business meetings, a lot of great stuff being talked about for this year and for the future of the event um a lot of exciting things planned for you guys um we're really excited for it hope you guys can join us for that october 11th to the 13th in salem massachusetts of course it's coming it's fastly approaching we are about a month and a half away now it's crazy but yeah me steve todd will be there we're going to be hosting events and whatnot we are planning a live podcast and everything so Come on down and join us. It's just a bunch of Halloween.com for all details. And I'll leave it at that. Awesome. Uh, Look forward to it. Nice. Yes. All right, Todd. Mm. It's time. You have a book. I do. Bust it out, baby. Because it's time. The trivia. It. Let me pull it up and get out of my backpack real quick quick let me fold it over that uh, uh, there it is there's the page we are at joe 12 steve 11 me nine for quarter number three any man's game it's still close who's gonna mm -hmm. take it we'll see will steve two two pete this year mm -hmm. will todd come back from the from the grave and uh, regain his throne will joe get a victory first victory we'll see mm -hmm. stay tuned little motherfucker look at him <laughs> like I'm smiling. You never know. A little devious. All right, who, who would like to lead off? I will. Oh, all right. All right. Have you guys Bring seen it. the movie The Fourth Kind before I yes up into this? Yeah. yeah One yeah, time yeah. ago, but yes. Okay. One time. <laughs> all right. And then you probably won't get this, but we'll see. In the movie The Fourth Kind, what unusual occurrence prompts Abby to investigate? The shared experiences in her patients. She got Is it sleepwalking or something during the night, and then um, no, no. Steve, uh, Steve. May, perhaps I didn't word this right. So, <laughs> yeah. 
uh, in the movie, of course, Abby, who does the investigating, uh, yeah. she uh, when she is talking to all of her patients who have seen these uh, alleged aliens, um, they all say they saw something before witnessing oh, a blue light. Aliens. Incorrect. <laughs> Pretty common. Um, <laughs> they saw uh, a dead relative. Incorrect. Well, I'm never gonna get it. <laughs> it. I will give you a hint because it is a tough question. Yeah. Um, it is an animal they see. A, cat? a rabbit. It's not a rabbit. It's not a rabbit. Uh they see an owl. An owl. Interesting. A white oh. owl, to be oh, exact. I've seen a white owl. Does that mean? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. It's in that movie. Did you walk funny me? the next morning? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like start hearing like radio broadcasts in my mouth. <laughs> right. Um. Remind me, are the aliens real in that movie, or is it like psychosis? I don't remember. No, it's real, I believe. Doesn't she like go missing or something yeah. at the end I, of that movie? Uh-huh. Like the aliens abduct her and like she's oh, never heard sure. from again. Type I believe thing. so. Yeah, yeah. And it's cool. all supposed to be real. Cool, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, <clears throat> I will go. And aliens. Seen it. Le- yep, yeah, seen it. Lieutenant Gorman, a new lieutenant to the Colonial Marines. <clears throat> states that he has how many simulated combat drops? Ooh. None. Incorrect. Is he related to Psycho Gorman? He is. <laughs> he's actually his great 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 grandson. Yes. Lovely. Uh, ooh, I don't know. Uh, a hundred. Incorrect. Um, one more guess. One more so, guess. Throw it out there. Yeah. Um, simulated combat drops. Simulated. Mm-hmm. Simulated uh, three thousand, incorrect. A thousand, incorrect. It's a joke. It's they're they're shit talking him because he's very new and he only has thirty eight simulated combat drops and mm. two regular combat drops. This one included, so he's a very not experienced. So <laughs> kind of a hard question. Never mind. That's fine. Oh well. Well, my first answer was none. That's why I figured you were going uh, with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, guess the movie based off the IMDb. Parental guide. We start always with sex and nudity. Yes. Okay. One female is completely naked. Uh, hell yeah. Her butt and her breasts are seen oh. when she walks around the locker room. Two for two for one special. <laughs> I'm gonna do violence and gore last because it's kind of the giveaway. So okay. profanity. Fifty six F words. Twenty one shit. Three slang terms uh, each for male, uh, prick and dick, and female, pussy. Uh, one slang term for breasts, tits, eight Oops, asses, okay. two uses with hole, five hells, <laughs> three dams, one SOB, six uses of uh, Jesus, four wow. goddams, two Jesus Christ, one use of God and Christ as exclamations. Joe's doing the math. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's Alcohol, muted. drugs, and smoking. Snorting substances and smoking. Snorting. I know it. I know it. Do you know it? Is it I Alien do. Resurrection? No, it is The Faculty. Correct. Nice. Yes. Yes. The same one? The snorting. New, the snorting. Okay. And then I was thinking of her walking around naked in the locker room. Right. Uh, oh. Showing her booty. Did we cover that? We did, right? We, we did. did. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. So like Southern chick, huh? Yeah. That's new to the school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Josh Hart right. has a piece of shit in that movie. Oh. I'll... Die on that hill. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Uh, three three letterbox reviews. Ooh. Can you guess the movie? All right. Number one. How do you forget to bring your dog? How do you forget to bring your dog, a most beloved member of your family, inside the house during an invasion? Unrealistic. Ooh. Well, okay. Number two. Asian. The nerds were right. This is a quote from the movie. Yeah. Sure. And number three. Faith as horror. Family in the process of rebuilding. Suspense within silences. Terrifying and beautiful in a way I can't quite describe. Mainly because of its unrelenting confidence. I wish I could replace every new theatrical released Christian movie with this. Oh, my word. Uh, signs? It is signs. Damn, that was my guess. I was, <laughs> I was like blanking on it. Yeah. <laughs> it clicked. 
Clear. Okay. <clears throat> in Aliens, another Aliens question. Seen it. You both have seen it. How long is it stated that Ripley has been adrift in space after the events of part one? 80 years. Incorrect. It is. Uh, I want to say it's like tw- it's not it's not that long, I feel. I'm gonna say twenty seven years. Incorrect. One more guess and we will go closest to this time. Thirty six years. Thirty six years on the board. Twenty three years. Twenty three. Steve is closest to fifty seven years in space. Okay. Yeah, I knew it was long because the Romulus is in the middle, and I remember Romulus yeah. being at least twenty five ish years after. Something Alien. like that. Yeah. All right. Guess the movie uh, by the cast of the film. Okay. And I'm naming all of the members, so I'm not omitting anyone in this one. Okay. Okay. Ben Feldman, Theo Rossi, Mike Vogel, TJ Miller, Jessica Lucas. And Lizzie Kaplan. Oh, oh, um, I, that's uh, yes, I know exactly what movie this is, but I can't remember the name of it. It's uh, we, going, I guess. I don't Shoot. know if we reviewed it. We haven't. We haven't. We definitely it's... discussed it though. It's an alien movie. I remember they're that. They're all alien movies today. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, <What> the... spoiler. <laughs> yeah, right. I I remember specifically. There's like a scene in the bathroom. Uh. Yeah, I don't. I I definitely cannot remember the name of this movie though. You guys give up? That was all the character. That was all the actors. Uh, well, all the the ones that you would recognize anyway. All the ones. Yeah. T.J. Miller, Lizzie, Theo Rossi, Ben Theo Feldman. Rossi. Yeah, I know exactly. I can picture well, it. Give me a help me it out came, here. It came out probably within the past not, like not what, help him five out. years. Help me out here. <laughs> uh, I don't. You guys it's give like, up? Yeah. You guys yeah. gonna kick kick yourself on this one? Yeah. <laughs> It is Cloverfield. Cloverfield. Uh, oh, right. Cloverfield. Cloverfield's good, man. Yeah. That's actually not the movie I was movie. thinking of. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, in the last five years. No, that's not right. That's... Well. There maybe was the another last one. one, maybe, but. Yeah. yeah. I think the first one was, what, 2008 or something? 2008, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's my turn. Yep. No, no. It's Joe. Sorry, it's oh, Joe. Spoiler me. alert. Last one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, guess the movie. Based on the IMDb information. Oh. Okay, this movie was released in the year 1996 with a PG-13 rating clocking in at one hour and 46 minutes. Categorized as dark comedy, space sci-fi, Mars and Attacks? It is Mars Attacks. Wow. Yeah. Fucking firing <laughs> off today. Jeez. All right. All right. Uh, Todd, can you hold on for two hours? I've just got to watch something real quick and I will get back to you. <laughs> Aliens! <laughs> Who was originally cast as Corporal Hicks before being replaced by Michael oh, Bean? Jesus Christ. I, I've heard this before. I have yeah. two. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, fuck. You guys know him well. Oh, I know. Ar- see- Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, but that would have been fucking insane. <laughs> was it... Um... Corporal Hicks is in charge. I say we nuke you from a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Does he have horror ties? He does. He does. He does, okay. yeah. Bruce Campbell. Incorrect. All right. I guess twice, so I'm not going to say <laughs> <laughs> He's got um, he's got horror ties. He's got action ties. He's got what's my give it Western ties. He's got he's got everything ties. He's a great guy. He's just um, one of those guys. He did he did have a drug problem during this, and they had to replace him. That's right. That's right. I remember us that's talking why, about this. Or... That's why Michael Bean's armor was a little loose because they custom fit to all the actors, and he got mm. cut. Close to production. Steve, nothing. I, I no, I can't think of it. All right, James Ramar. Warriors, come out and play. He's great. Yeah, he's great. He's great. But All I right. do love Michael Bean in this because Hicks is awesome. 
There is a uh, Monster Mania in November I'm going to. It has an Aliens reunion. I saw that. I saw that. That's cool. That's yeah. awesome. Paul, did... Ri- Paul Reiser is going to oh. be there, which is oh. a cool one. Fucking yeah. Burke. Paul Reiser, Michael Bean, and uh, Newt. Nice. I've, I've met Bean before. He's a he's a really nice man. Yeah. Hmm. He charges a lot, man. He, really? Like he, he's expensive now. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I, th- I feel like he's like over 80 for an autograph Ooh, wow. these I, days. Yeah. I got and then, um, yeah. like 40 like five years ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Crazy. And I'm, I'm yeah, excited. All fucking pricey. Tom Skerritt will be there from the original. Alien, nice. Which I've never had the chance to meet him. So oh, Dallas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Captain Dallas, and Poltergeist yeah. three as well for you Poltergeist <laughs> fans. Nice. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. This is this is an easy one. Oh. Uh, so better be quick on this one. In Killer Clowns from Outer Space, what's the company name on the ice cream truck? Mm. I just watched that like two fucking. <laughs> Your fucking merch. I play the game everywhere. Fucking... <laughs> yeah, know. Damn it! Like, you got all these games asshole. in the game. It's uh, yeah. oh man, it's yeah. It's... Uh, the ice cream know. truck literally comes in every fucking it round does. of that game. <laughs> it yeah. does. They show it's it a million times. Yeah. It's... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, I just want a hint. Sure. Big top ice cream. Wrong. My hint: ice cream is in the title. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to give you as a hint like uh, <laughs> yeah brother's ice cream that no. sounds vaguely no it's i got not no you guys give up nothing yeah. yeah it's jojo's ice cream jojo's mm. ice cream well there you go oh, jojo's shit. ice cream jojo see what <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> That's all right it. steve with the big night too joe and i tied at one apiece which brings a First place tie, Steve and Joe both at 13, myself at 10 for quarter number three. Trivia, 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 trivia. Ooh. Like that? I love that. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Not as beautiful as your uh, your breakdowns of the movie's plot, which we'll get in a couple minutes here. But Indeed. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I find it hard to uh, do breakdowns because I don't can't take notes in the movie theater right now so it's like yeah, i know that it's tough to remember see, everything yeah <laughs> with the movie theater ones yeah. all right well why wait we are plugging away on this episode gentlemen we really are but i think we'll have a lot to discuss here for our main event of the evening 2024's alien romulus starring kaylee spaney david johnson archie renault isabel Mercad, Spike Fern, and Eileen Wu. Directed by Fede Alvarez. Spot while scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station, a group of young space colonists come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. Not the best, Todd. Not the best plot. But I know who can do it better. Mm. You. Oh, well, thank you. Alien Romulus. So we start off in deep space, right? We have a ship coming in. What's going on? What's up with this? Goes into like a fucked up ship. Oh, it's a Nostromo from part one. What are they doing? Are they snagging an alien? Looks like they are. So they go in there. They fucking pull a frozen alien or something into their cargo hold and they zoom off, right? 20 years later, that happens. And now, present time or whatever, we're on this little colony and we realize that it has zero hours of sunlight a year is that important to the plot it's not it's a cool little feature they don't bring it up ever again it is actually. anyway but that's why they're going to that planet it's because there's no sunlight on the planet that they're on get out of here steve <laughs> doing the plot here not breaking it down yet we uh catch up with rain and if you can guess your last name i'll give you one point on trivia it's caradine i don't know if that was ever said but rain she's a young i don't know we were thinking like 21 22 ish young female She's got her brother uh, named Andy, who seems a little bit slow. He's got some mental deficiencies, and we soon learn that he's a synthetic human um, that was recycled and whatever his dad uh, worked on him a little bit, brought him back to speed and raised him as the uh, Rain's brother. So she protects him with her life because, you know, he loves him. Um, they're on this, like, fucking piece of shit planet where they're miners and they're constantly dying and getting sick, stuff like that. She goes up to the mining company and she's like, hey, dude, I got, you know, 10 years on my contract my contract's done give me my pass to get off this planet like oh sorry Waylon Utani uh says you have to do 20 years now come back in a fucking come back in a little while sorry you know not my problem 
she's all upset she goes to her ex-boyfriend's house which they're like all new zealand accents i don't know why but hey let's do it and uh she's like hey what's up and he's like hey we got a plan we have this little spaceship and we picked up like a little like beacon or something there's like a spaceship up there man let's go over the, up there we'll see if they got uh chiro 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 cryopods like that the things you sleep in for like years so you can get the plan safely let's see if they cryo? have any of those cairo cryo cryo cry <laughs> like cry just say cry, cry and then oh oh cryo okay, yeah there you thank go. you cryo pods and uh yeah that's their plan to get some of those so they can sneak off planet without Whaley and tani fucking with them so there's this uh big old space station that's just like floating all weird and guess what in like 30 hours it's gonna crash so good thing we found this right now so let's go on it let's find some of these pods um wait was this like a research vessel for some xenomorph action i think so are we gonna accidentally open them and like release the embryos or whatever because we were fucking around with them i think so so we follow this group of people as they're trying to get the pods and then they're trying to survive because of the xenomorph outbreak and um and yeah, man, had had a lot of high hopes for this one. Fede Alvarez, obviously a fucking great director. He hit some hard horror stuff going on. Don't Breathe is a fucking awesome. Um, and then obviously, like, Evil Dead, right? It's fucking violent as fuck. And I was expecting, like, a huge bloodbath. Because you got Xenomorphs, and they're crazy, and they rip people apart, and they chest burst and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, shit. Combine that with this director, this could be off the hook. This could be fucking crazy. Unfortunately, though, like for every good thing we had in this, I thought the world building was really cool. I love the homage uh, to the originals, like all that retro sci-fi um, computer shit. Perfect. It really felt like an alien film. But unfortunately, like it never really uh, geared up all the way. Like it always seemed like they're on the cusp of like, all right, now it's going to happen. Uh, OK, maybe maybe now it's going to happen. And it never really does. There's some goofy ass CG that we'll talk about shortly, probably uh, that I didn't drive with. And uh, I felt some of the plot armor from some of the characters was a little bit too much. That being said, the main stars, Andy and Rain, I thought they did an excellent job, especially the Android characters switching back and forth from being, you know, simple minded, for lack of a better term, to like advanced. And then Rain, she carried the film without her. If she was a lesser actress, I think the movie would have suffered. So overall, uh, I enjoyed it, but I did have some big issues with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole time I was watching this, I was like, that girl who plays rain looks so familiar i was like i just saw her in something and then i, I civil war at, it was civil war and i was like <laughs> yeah God, she was great in that too and she's a great she's upcoming great. actress for sure yeah man i was obviously so hyped for this um you know and i'm i like i like the fr alien franchise but i wouldn't say like i think probably out of the three of us you know probably you todd or i would say are, is probably the biggest uh fan of this franchise um, but yeah, I mean, I was excited just because Fede Alvarez was on board and then I was hearing the hype uh, around it. Um, man, just the experience of seeing an uh, alien movie in the theater again. I mean, granted, I, I you know, we did see Covenant like, but man, I like to try to forget that movie if I can. <laughs> um, but man, it was exciting, like, you know, going and having a face hugger popcorn bucket and everything. I mean, that experience alone was just awesome. And yeah, man, I'm I'm kind of like right there with you, Todd. I I think like when people are saying it's the best movie since Alien movie since Aliens, um, yeah, I mean it's good. You know, I might I tend to agree with that, but that's also not saying much because most of the other sequels are not very good. So, and personally, I I think we'll actually I'll wait because I think we'll probably say our Alien movie rankings um at the end, and if we haven't, we'll we'll take a pause and we can we can do that <laughs> with the power of editing. But um. Yeah, uh, overall, like, I, I liked it, but I it, I didn't love it. I, I really wanted to love it, and I just feel like, like you said, I think Andy and Rain 100% carry this movie. Like, without them, this movie is bad, <laughs> honestly. The other characters are just not developed well enough and aren't interesting. They're just sort of there, you know? And it's funny because I watched um, FX had an alien marathon on like this whole weekend and i watched alien not too long after this and i'm like man this is fucking how you do an alien like just like all you cared about every single character right in that like first alien movie and in aliens and that's kind of been the problem with like all these other alien sequels is that like you know you care about one or two characters but you don't care about the whole crew and i i, I think that's a big problem here yeah, man, there's uh, there were some uh, there's a lot of fan service right in this one and for the most part i enjoyed most of it, but I think all, some of it went a little too far where it became sort of eye roll rather than it being, uh, you know, good fan service. 
So I, I had some issues with that. I think when the Z I think when the xenomorphs and like every and stuff like that is happening, it's great, but I think it's too few and, and far between. And then we get to the third act, which I'm I'll say that my thoughts for that. It it takes a swing and you're either gonna be on board with it or you're gonna you're gonna fucking hate it. And I don't even know if I fully know where I stand with it yet. And I'm I'm gonna be interested to see like what you guys think of it as well. But overall, like it, it's at the end of the day, I think it's a good movie. I I think it does take a little too long to get going though. Like I found myself a little bored, like, you know, while we were moving and I was like, all right, can we fucking get into the fucking alien madness at some point here? And I think the problem is, was the character development. So, but you know, overall, I still enjoyed it, but I wish it was, it was better. Yeah. So I I think we're all going to be pretty much in agreement uh, on this one. Uh, I did really enjoy it. I think it mostly looked great. It was also sounded great, you know, so this is one I really recommend people check on theaters because it is an experience, uh, this movie. And like I said, uh, Rain and Andy fucking fantastic performances. And I agree with Joe, the other performances, fine, but the characters were not anyone I was really interested in. You know, there's there's this other girl, uh, I think her name was Kay or something. She pops in and out of the story once in a while, and I'm like, oh, she's still alive? Like, what are we doing with her? She just, like, she goes back to the ship, and then she's out of the ship, and then she's back in the ship, and then she's on the ground. And it's just like, I don't care about this character, you know? Just move on. I just want to see more stuff with Rain and Andy and the aliens and stuff like that. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the CG, I'm sure, very soon, which very hit and miss depending on what we're talking about i think the there's a definitely an elephant in the room as far as the cg goes where we go into uncanny valley but i think overall i did get the feeling that we were in space and when they were at um at the mine at the beginning of the film i thought it looked great like it looked like a real place that had a lot of trouble and that was very like skeezy and stuff like that so i I like that part of it however the practical effects Some of them, amazing. You know, really cool alien action. But I'm not going to lie, especially one scene in particular where they're in this tunnel and there's all this black tar kind of like in a circle around them. And there's bodies inside of the black tar of victims that they've had in the past. To me, it looked more like a Halloween Horror Nights house than it did an actual place in a movie. The bodies looked like dummies. They didn't look like organic beings that had been killed. And I... You know, like, if I'm thinking this is more of an attract, like an amusement park attraction look than something that's real, it kind of takes me a little bit out of the film. But having said that, that those are kind of exceptions because overall I think the film does look great. And I liked it a lot. You know, it's not until when I finish, like, watching a movie, the first thing I do is I put it on on my 2024 list. And it's not until I compared it to other movies that I was able to score it properly because... At first, I had a score in mind, but then I'm looking at all the other movies on my list. I'm like, well, it was better than that. It was better than that. Oh, it was was better than that. And that's it actually went higher than I expected, I guess. So I did overall enjoy it, but it definitely has some glaring issues for me. Let's let's talk about fan service, man. And I know we all want to see throwbacks and nods and stuff like that. But I think when you go wrong is exactly what we all think is awful is having Ash come back as the synthetic human right and having instead of just having a similar looking actor they do that fucking de-aging or whatever the fuck cgi fully face and it just takes you out of it because now i'm in this world and i'm on this cool spaceship and now i see this like wavering face you know in and out i'm like what the fuck are they doing it just like it's immediate just awfulness yeah, I mean, also I think it like creates some confusion, right? Because like at a point, I'm like, wait, are we on the N- Nostromo? Like, you know, like I'm like that because, and then like you find out it's not Ash, right? It's a new whole new character, it's the, it's uh, the same, Rook. same model. Yeah. yeah, but like it's the same model thing. So like to me, it was like a little confusing. I mean, it, right? It was cool, like obviously to see that sort of character back, and they also like sort of played off uh, of Bishop as well right like when you find him he looks exactly like sort of how bishop was was torn apart as well at first i thought it was going to be bishop i was like oh cool and it was cool to see you know the fucking dead alien which was a fucking great uh imagery like uh the dead xenomorph uh hanging up top to find you know when he talks about sort of what happened to this ship but yeah man i i 
I hated um how it looked. Like it just took me out of the movie. Like it just looked so shitty. Like and for a movie that's being made in 2024, the technology I thought would be I mean I've seen deep fakes that look better, uh, you know, on the internet than this movie has. And this movie had to have had a, a fucking big budget and just for them to mils. right, and for them to go through production and then like look at it and be like that yeah that looks good uh at the end it's fucking to me it's it's befuddling and uh you know inexcusable like it, it just really did not look good yeah and I, I agree with you joe um i was somewhat confused at times because they specifically went to the nostromo right so it's like okay you get a kind of a character from the nostromo but it's not him like why i don't know it was weird like I, I i had to think like okay his name's rook but i know his name's ash and is he just changing like I, I was trying to confuse like but how did he get there they only picked up a like a shell that probably had a xenomorph in it like it was it was confusing and unnecessary in my opinion it just like i get what they were going for but at the same time and, and it didn't look good i mean let's let's not face it it, it was uncanny valley it felt like a video game yeah, I, I felt like I was watching a video game cutscene every time that he was in, uh, in the scene, and that's again that goes back to my issue with some of the practical effects as well. It just looked goofy, and it took me out of it. You know, if I'm watching a movie and all of a sudden my mind starts thinking about kind of how it's made or whatever, it's it's going to take me out a little bit. Yeah, did did I miss something? Because did the space station just become derelict? Or was it there for 20 years or whatever it is after the Nostromo, you know? Because how in the hell did the company not send their own people to investigate this and some fucking ragtag kids with a piece of shit spaceship are able to do that? That makes that it, that's the it, biggest plot hole. It's so it's so funny you say that because literally coming out of the theater, that was the first thing Sam said too. She's like, I do not buy that like at all. And I'm like, Yeah, you know, you're not wrong. You know, this yeah, big bioweapon is yeah. so important, you know, and they're right. like what? No, I mean it's a good, it's a, it's a great point. I think it's definitely a plot hole here. I, I agree. It, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Um, now, were there attempts, you know, where they tried to, to get it and they couldn't get it back, and then they just essentially uh, stopped because it was about to get destroyed anyway? So they're just like, well, the word, there's no salvaging this at this point. Maybe, but they should have made that clear, you know that. No way in hell that happened. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't know. They like, were so anal did, about it. Did, did they say it about the dial in the dialogue at the beginning when she was exp well, uh, the guy was explaining like why they're doing this, and I don't know, maybe I missed a line. I don't think yeah. we did. I think yeah. it's just yeah. overlooked. I think the story's very like, like confusing. Honestly, like I I found myself like being like, okay, what is happening? Why are they going up to this ship? You know, I know they tried to like say stuff in the beginning, but I just felt like there was a lot going on and a lot to like look at and shit. That I found myself like uh, lost um, with the plot throughout. I don't know if that's just me or if you guys kind of were feeling the same way. I mean, I get the gist of it. I just, yeah. you know, like they're going up there to get the spaceship parts so they can fuck off. But I just can't get over that big, big fucking. Wait a minute, this giant project above a Wayland Utani planet is not being investigated by Wayland Utani personnel. Like if that makes no sense, and it's like unforgivable that plot line. You could have done anything else. You could have just made it a simple outbreak, and then it fucking comes down or whatever. And that's what I was before you go, Joe. Like I hated that they set up this really cool mine. Right? It's fucking dark. It's wet. It's raining. Oh, holy shit! The xenomorphs are gonna thrive here, dude. Everyone's sick. Everyone's compacted. I'm like, I cannot wait for the xenomorph to come back to this planet. And it doesn't happen. We're stuck on the spaceship. We've seen the spaceship already. We've seen this fucking seven other movies. Like, no, bring it down to this planet. And I was I was bummed about that too. That's actually a, a cool that actually is a really cool idea. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that, like an alien in the mine type Dude, thing or something imagine. like that. Yeah. Still, that, imagine that all the, cool. the hive in a mine. That'd be yeah. cool as fuck. And it would no have been queen. So, it would have been different too, right? Like other than like always being up in the spaceship. Um but yeah, so let me just see if I'm like deciphering this right from the movie. Cause I just want to make sure I got the plot right. But so at the very beginning of the movie, right. We see sort of, the, they find like the big chap, right? Like yep. they, and so, and then it they, ends they up find on the one that Sigourney, right. That's Sigourney. Out. Right. Yeah. 
so they put it on their ship, right? And then like it does it, it comes back to life, and then like so that's what happened on the ship, I assume. Like, that or they experimented on across. it and fucked up by like right. re- reproducing right. it. They right? reproduced because, it because okay. yeah, they had to re- reproduce it because that's what the labs are showing with all the. Because is but, that the big? That's the big chap at the the top, like dead up there, right? I when they're like that, sort of looking up, that like tore so, part. So that all escaped then. Yeah. I assume in the midst of. Yeah. Why didn't? It, why is there no queen then? Right. Because <laughs> that's we're not gonna have a queen. <laughs> you would think. I was works? expecting. I was expecting a queen, um, throughout. Instead, we get something far different in our oh final act. Oh my god! We'll get there. We'll get <laughs> there. That that might be because they were created in a lab. As opposed to uh, yeah. created or organically, you know. So, yeah, Maybe. and I, I think that's what they were going with with the other creature that comes in at some point. I how think, would they? Uh, how would they create the face huggers from just the xenomorph though? With like DNA, I guess. Yeah, because they they share the same DNA, right? But how would There's... they know what they look like? They've never seen one at this point. The what, what haven't they seen? The face uh, face huggers, yeah. Well, they, they would have probably gotten it from. Isn't Face Hugger like stage one? Of, stage like, a one, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, if they combine the DNA, like, and birth it, right? The Face yeah. Hugger would be the first the thing that would, would be the first thing. Okay, be born. Sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the Face Hugger's penis going in the fucking character's mouth. Oh my mouth. god! <laughs> yeah, it's like oh. fucking. I don't think we've seen that version of it before, where it's like literally a penis-looking device going into the character's mouth mm-hmm. and impregnating him, and. Am I wrong, or is it like, do they speed up all this shit very fast? Like, it went from... Yes. And it was weird, too, because they made their own plot hole, because, like, that one girl gets face huggered, right? And then they freeze the tail, and they pull it off, and then that face hugger is still alive. But we know from previous movies that when it impregnates somebody, it fucking curls up like a spider and dies. And then the fucking Andy was like, uh, I don't know if it's uh, had enough time to impregnate him, so it gives a question to the audience. However, we know that it was impregnated. Therefore, that face hugger should have been dead as soon as it fell off. I don't know. Todd Gripe or just plot hole, I don't know. But either way, it was like they're flexing the rules just to fit their narrative. Even with the acid. Like, they're saying, like, oh, this acid will go straight through the ship. But we know for a fact on this um, space station, because it's in the room with with uh, uh, Brooke, that the acid went through, but didn't go all the way through the ship. So, like, which one is it? Does it go through the ship or does it not? You can't have fucking best of both worlds. And I know from, like, previous movies, like, it, it does lose its, like, fucking potency or whatever. Right. But it's, like, I don't know, man. A lot of shit in there they put, and it didn't, it didn't make sense. Well, or, or put needlessly, like, so the movie's called Romulus, which is half the name of the ship. So there's another half called Remus, but there's really no point to it. Like, is that well, a different why, station, or we, is, are they on that same station? It's that same station. It's got a oh, bridge between oh, okay. them. Uh, I don't know if they yeah. can separate or whatever, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't do anything for the plot. You know, so it's just it's like they overcomplicated things, but also oversimplified things, which gave the appearance of plot holes. So, yeah. all right. So we have Andy, uh, the brother, who's a th- synthetic, and then uh, they find Rook, and they, he's he's an android or whatever. And they they can't get into a room because they don't have the clearance. So they go back to the android that's dead, take his chip out, put it in Andy, and Andy, who was like malfunctioning a lot, instantly becomes fucking fine, right? And he's smart and he's talking, you know, quote unquote normal things like that. And now his directive was to do whatever Rain said, what was best for her. But now his new directive is to do what's right for the company. And what was right for the company is to take care of this life form because they want to make some fucking uh, human advancement or something so they can better survive in space or some shit like that how do you guys feel about andy being two different characters yeah man i i mean it made sense right like i you know to me it made sense to sort of go that route in a kind of you know once again sort of fan service reminding you sort of i guess ash in some ways it was like going back to ash in the the first alien movie you know um so I, i was cool with it it yeah, man, I preferred nicer, simple-minded Andy, but it was it was cool and it was something different. And then when you do get back to sort of uh, normal, it was a good sort of character arc for him. And then returning back to that original arc, uh, yeah, I liked it. I actually thought the Andy storyline was the most interesting in yeah. the movie. You know, um, the fact that he's played off like almost like neutral, right? Once he he gets possession of both minds. 
because like there's a point where a girl's getting killed by the xenomorph or stalked by the xenomorph and he doesn't open the door to save her and it's like well if i save her we're all dead so i'm not going to open the door and it was cool to see kind of these moral decisions off uh, that was like someone who's kind of neutral but also kind of not right because he's kind of also supposed to protect uh, the assets rather than you know the human part of it and i thought it was just super interesting and i have to give huge credit to the uh, to the actor who played him because he, you could tell which version of andy he was just based off his like his looks and his, the way he spoke and everything and that was really impressive how did you feel about once again like fan service his get away from her you bitch line oh, that they the threw out the movie. in the end it did it <laughs> did it make any sense to his like no character no. that he would say no. that line like no. it was literally just there for fan service i mean did it make me smile a little bit sure <laughs> in but, cringe, at the same probably. <laughs> but also at the same time i'm like okay <laughs> i you know he yeah you're, you're absolutely right it makes zero sense for his character to say that plus the way he says it is fucking awful and then <laughs> three they could have easily made that that line make sense if instead of picking on the motherfucker the whole time they had one of the side characters be like hey man i'm gonna teach you some cuss words or something similar to how do they teach arnold and t2 how to fuck around yeah right it could have been just do that and then when he says get away from, get away from her you bitch or whatever his delivery was is like oh my god it was fucking terrible man i i feel like we haven't gone into i guess the i guess scares uh, i guess scares. you could say in this movie i i i feel like this movie lacked tension in a lot of ways you know the, the, when the xenomorphs do show up and stuff and the face hugger and stuff it's cool and everything like that but i just feel like it was missing the tension that we got in like especially the first alien movie obviously um and even aliens yeah man like i thought it was cool like the scenes were cool like even the zero gravity scene which it was something different that we ha really haven't seen before i thought that was really cool with the you know the the blood acid and stuff like that sort of floating uh you know with zero gravity and stuff and the xenomorphs with zero gravity and stuff like that but i was just waiting like I this movie was never scary which i was disappointing a little bit to me yeah because they were they're, they weren't dangerous i don't think right you know, because we you know even the first one obviously they're they don't know what they're dealing with and the second one you got highly trained soldiers marines and they get fucked up so then you're like holy shit like these xenomorphs are fucking crazy however in this one like they're dispatched by her very easily and the first time using a rifle and is by herself and she kills them all in the hallway it's like why there's no like you don't have any skin in the game because they don't do any damage yeah i i agree and not only that because i didn't care for the majority of the characters it, it won't be scary because i'm not i don't care about their fate you know so and that's always a problem in a lot of these movies i think the closest thing we got to tension which i'm gonna have a big todd gripe on <laughs> was uh when they were trying to sneak uh through the facehugger lab do it but bring it motherfucker takes a phone call he takes <laughs> a phone the, call he's talking <laughs> it's like oh my god i couldn't believe it like fucking andy was like all right make sure you don't sweat <laughs> yeah they're like what i i how am i make myself not sweat andy and he's like just be quiet and then yes yeah, they're squeaking the little feet are squeaking yeah they're fucking whispering like God, the fuck they oh it was... I, especially after I just watched that a quiet place uh day one like only a few weeks ago where <sighs> the guy just ripped his shirt and is fucking devoured can you yeah. imagine in that movie someone stopped it's like oh hello <laughs> oh, god, like you know like god damn it oh my god i that awful made me it made me laugh because of how bad it was, it was i was dumb. i was laughing too in the beginning when that guy has like a baseball bat and he's just knocking him out of the air like it's nothing like we need to sign this guy to mlb right fucking now because yeah. these small little spider creatures are jumping he's he's hitting them out of the air no problem I'm like what the hell there's there's zero danger to those fucking things and in yeah. the original you saw a face like holy fuck you know and i love how they set it up before they go into that room right and he's like okay not only is it a like a body a temperature thing it's also sound but it's also they might sense if you're scared they'll sense if you're nervous they'll sense of this and they'll sense of that no they're fucking taking phone calls they're hyperventilating they're and the face target is like yeah <laughs> yeah that's yes. goddamn that was so dumb how does he how does andy know that though because remember he said his knowledge is not there 
when he got transferred uh, into the new th- that's mines. right after he got the transfer isn't it uh so it like built up or something well rook rook's memory would have rook's memory right yeah because yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah rook's memory would have probably have information on the science project of the face hugger so and why was rook uh able to function still without his mind chip it's a good question <laughs> so, they take it out right yeah well if, if you look at it this way andy still has part of andy when he has rook's mind chip in, in his mind so i think the mind chip is just like like a program on a system you know it's like a game in an xbox it's not necessarily the xbox right so i think right. he's still active he just doesn't have kind of part of his memory but he still has the clearance to operate the ship though yeah <laughs> Which doesn't make sense because they took the clearance chip. That was the whole reason. For the <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It's damn this fucking movie, man. We'll oh, yeah. talk about it a little less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the there's a pregnant who yes. um, we're supposed to like, but we don't really because <laughs> it's not really important. She gets face hugged, and you're like, oh man, the face hugger's gonna do something with that baby, and then it comes out. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't like it. I'll just say there, it, it was. It was it was wonky, man. It was, yeah. So you know, I thought I was not expect. Honestly, I thought the movie was gonna end after the the you know get away from her, you bitch line with Andy. I, I was like, okay, like, but I'm glad it didn't end there because I think it, it just wasn't enough, right? We needed some sort of other thing to happen here. I mean, it was a swing. It was different. I ultimately like I, I didn't love how it looked. But I liked the idea of it, right? Like I, it reminded me. It was sort of reminded me of Prometheus in, in some ways. Like it had sort of, you know, like sort of these hybrid, you know, alien slash human hybrid thing. I, I, it was cool. I just wish they made it look scarier, like or creepier. You know, it, it just came off looking more goofy than it, it should have. So yeah, like. I appreciated the effort, but I think the execution wasn't the best. It just felt like more fan service to me. You know, uh, they're trying to bring in Prometheus into the story, and I don't think it was required for this particular film. It's like, hey, remember Prometheus? <laughs> yeah, that's basically all it was. And I was just like, uh, I'd rather just see that another queen, honestly, than than that. See, I was thinking Alien Resurrection because like they have that weird looking sure. alien. But um, so the the face hugger mixes with the unborn child, and then yeah, this is how. But how it's also though? it's that is it's that, that it... uh, that serum that uh, they take serum. as well. Oh, that's oh, right. She does put. That's that right. Serum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's I, what... I actually completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that. That's what I think made it to that creature because that's what Prometheus was kind of about, right? Like so, like the ultimate hybrid between humans and xenomorphs. Like the, Which is stupid. You want to look at like this fucking monstrosity? That's like the next stage in human evolution. Yeah, it's basically like it's, it's basically if a xenomorph right? and a human had sex, this is it's what stupid. it would look like. You know, the the real version of that would be taking shit that they want and mixing it with human DNA, not turning into a completely different fucking creature. Why would like, you it, want to mix like human and alien DNA? I understand like the science of it, but like it's if you want acid blood's cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I mean, I guess you could make it into some sort of weapon, like weaponize I it. I suppose. Okay, so the serum that me and Joe both forgot about. <laughs> um, so on the space station, they were talking about like humans being too weak for space travel and blah, blah, blah. So they want to get the xenomorphs because they always have a hard on for the xenomorphs, man, saying they're the perfect fucking creature. Blah, blah, blah. So they want to take DNA and give that to humans so there's a serum and one of the girls is dying so they take the serum and inject it in her that's the stupidest fucking choice you can make right some unknown yep. substance yep <laughs> and then they get, get the hybrid yeah. yeah i i yeah i guess they just wanted to you know save you didn't need that though you could have she was pregnant you could have you didn't even have to explain it just be like oh she's pregnant and now she has a xenomorph baby and they combine somehow and then have that you don't need to have this whole elaborate I don't know. Shot. The birthing scene was pretty cool though. Like yeah, when she cool. fucking it was cool. That was a that was a cool ass scene when the fucking egg comes out of her and you're like, oh fuck. Um but yeah, man, it reminded me of Splice. Remember the movie Splice? Oh, Splice. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, kinda, it kinda looked like it kinda looked like the face kind of reminded me of that, but also <laughs> like Pr- Prometheus too, obviously, which is I'm sure what they were going for. What happened to that creature at the end of 
of Romulus? I don't even remember. How did how did it die? Uh, that's a good question. Did it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's how much my interest was uh, by the end of it. I was they were fi- they were fighting. She had like a, a a cable or something, but I don't fucking remember what happened to that. Creature. It, it wasn't anything like super crazy. Crazy. It was just like yeah. oh, it died in the when it's crashing the, into the asteroid yeah. field. Right. Oh, yeah, because there has to be a countdown in alien movies. There always has of to course. be. Right. <laughs> yeah. so. <laughs> Which was accurate. Uh, it was done in real time. So when oh, they yeah? said like when they said like thirty minutes until impact, it was the actual thirty minutes of the That's actual movie. Neat. Yeah. Like that. <sighs> this, well, uh, it's a weird story. It's a weird movie, man. Yep. And then uh, Andy and uh, the girl. Rain? Do they? What happens to them? I forget. They they, they put themselves they in cryo. Go, yeah, cryo to, uh, to make it to that planet. Right. We to know her what happens. Home planet. No, to, to like that new planet they wanted yeah. to go to, so oh, they can okay. escape sort of being. But he's an and- slave, okay. essentially. <laughs> okay, but they also said that Andy's not allowed on that planet; they'll kill him. So, like, what's your Correct. plan? <laughs> and imprison her for bringing <laughs> that, that the android. Oh my gosh! Yeah, how do you of... know? How do you? Yeah, but he's also like um, a defective one, so maybe they would just think he's sort of like. I mean, they gotta have scanners by this yeah. point. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, right, they have yeah. scanners that can see through your fucking body. <laughs> right. See fucking uh, Blade Runner come and kill his ass in the next right. movie. <laughs> um, oh, before boy. we, I know we're getting ready to wrap up here, but I guess like, do you want to see more? Like, do you want to see do. a sequel with Andy and Rain I and do. more from Fede? I do. I I just want him. I feel that he was handcuffed, man. There's no other way to put it. Sure. Like, I mean, this was actually supposed to be a Hulu release. If you recall, oh really? So this was actually supposed to be a straight to Hulu um, release, and then I guess they liked it enough to be like, we should probably put this in theaters. I, I think I mean, Prey pushed them this way because Prey, yeah. it was supposed to th- this and Prey were supposed to have both uh, Hulu releases or Disney Plus in Canada. And um, when Prey was so successful, they decided to release it as a theater. I mean, Prey is fantastic, though. There's yeah a huge well, difference of having fan service but still being your own thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. The posters being fan service because you think you need to get those nods in there. But there's there are things I liked. I've been shitting out the whole movie and I I did like some stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean it looked great. Like it, it looked and sounded great. Yeah. Like, it's still I love the world. I love the set designs were great. Yeah, the set designs were yeah. great. The CGI enhanced like backgrounds and everything were great. It's just there were a couple bad things on both the practical and CGI side that kind of hurt the movie. I will say Sam was thrown off by the computer like stuff. She's like, why did it look so old? I was like, well, they're trying to make it look like the original alien movie. And she's like, yeah, she didn't like it though. She didn't like that. I thought it was cool though. I, I thought it was like a cool that look. Yeah, it yeah. was cool fan service, cool like throwback. I was like, well, it's like that universe. Like, yeah. you know, if it's supposed to be out the same universe, the technology wouldn't change or, you know. Yeah, if it works, say. it works. Right. So I thought that was cool. All right, gentlemen, should we get into rating? Yep. Sure. All right. I'll start us off. Yeah, but overall, it's solid, right? Like, I think Fede, like you said, Todd, I think he was handcuffed. Um, I, I think it was the start. It's the start of a potentially good run for him. I think there's a lot to be explored here, especially if we just follow Andy and Rain. But yeah, man, I think it was a good first effort. But I, I, I think like now he could, you know, he built this world, and I think now he could really take it over and and give us more. Um, I actually read a thing on trivia that he actually got a lot of. He showed this to Ridley Scott, and Ridley Scott gave him a lot of notes uh, about it, uh, which weren't all positive, and I, I think that's probably a good thing. Uh, but overall, man, it, it's a, it's a solid entry into the Alien franchise. Yeah, it, you know, is it the best movie since Aliens? No, I personally liked Prometheus better. I'm a, but I'm a big Prometheus fan, and we'll go ahead, we'll we'll do a little editing magic and do our ratings rankings here at the end. But yeah, man, it's solid. It definitely has its issues, though. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it. Is it top ten worthy? We'll see. It, it it might not be. Honestly, we'll see how this year plays out. If anywhere, it's going to be near the bottom of my top ten, um, which is disappointing because I was expecting like top five worthy. But yeah, overall, I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. Yeah, you know, I was expecting this to be my favorite of the year. And maybe, you know, that's, that's part of me setting myself too high, but, you know, you had the building blocks here, right? I think overall, the story is just the biggest culprit here. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you when you pick it apart. And 
the fan service doesn't always work, man. So you gotta, you know, take a step back and look at it. Does this make sense to the story, or is my just trying to suck someone's wiener in the theater and you know get get my uh, jollies off? I don't even know if that analogy makes any sense, but I'm sticking with it. Great, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Andy was awesome. Rain was awesome. Xenomorphs are always fucking cool. Uh, except for that, <laughs> that human hybrid, it was a little bit goofy. I still give it a three and a half out of five. I'm right there with you. I did enjoy it quite a bit. I just had a little bit higher standards than I was let down ultimately. And I think for valid reasons, not because, you know, I'm picking it apart just, just to be funny or whatever, it's, but it's like there are valid complaints in this film and they could have been easily fixed with a little bit of editing or we don't know. We weren't there in the in the production. We don't know what held them back, but a couple of things could be fixed. Three, three and a half out of five. And I do think it's a third best film. But Aliens and Alien 1 are just fucking nines out of 10. You know what I mean? This is like a six, seven. Yeah, and I, I'm right there too. Three and a half out of five. Uh, it probably won't make my top 10. It is there now, but I don't think it'll it'll probably be bumped off. I mean, fucking hope it'll be bumped off because, uh, you know, there's still a lot of films to watch this year. Uh, you know, my, <laughs> my biggest problem is the whole time I was thinking, fuck, I wish this was a Dead Space movie and not an Alien movie because... I feel like it was a lot of stuff we've seen before. You know, it didn't do enough new to get me kind of hyped um, in a way that I was kind of expecting. I was really thinking he'd do some really cool shit that we haven't seen before. And this was all, not only have we seen before, but literally you know, characters we've seen before and, uh, you know, things like that and lines we've heard before. So I, I was disappointed, but it was still a good film. It was fun. Uh, I'd probably watch it again. It just... I guess it was more disappointing than bad, you know, because I did enjoy it. So three and a half out of five is where I am. Sweet. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how I feel on a rewatch on this. I don't wonder if it will go up, go down, or stay the same. It'll, it'll definitely be interested, but I definitely want to see it again. It was also, I didn't realize it was filmed for IMAX, so I kind of want to go see it in IMAX now as well, because I think that'd be kind of cool. But, uh, oh, did you guys see any good trailers? Any interesting trailers? Uh, when you went to see this in theaters? Anything that popped shoot, up? I don't. There's that monkey movie with uh, Osgood Perkins coming out. Oh, it was a it was a monkey teaser. Man. It's like a story written a story by Stephen King. They like didn't show anything. They just showed like a wind up monkey type thing. But oh, so I mean, Osgood King Perkins. Too. Oh, Mufasa, yeah. Yeah, which yeah, whatever. All right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I saw a Bob Dylan movie that looked pretty cool with uh, really? Timothy Ch uh, Chalamet. Mm -hmm. It's playing Bob, Bob Dylan. Dylan. Oh, yeah. That's a that's a good yeah. casting actually. Yeah. Uh, I, I, found, I saw it in theaters for the first time as See No Evil, the remake. Oh, uh, yeah. From, uh, yep. Man, not having seen the they original. Show the they show the whole I'm like, movie. I know the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know exactly what happened. I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. Wowzers. I'm just curious. if I, I, I almost want to see it just to see if they go there. I don't think they will. Yeah. I, I'm t I, based on the trailer I watch, it looks like it's going to be the family's going to fight back. Yeah. Oh, God, you know what I mean? Such a it's, and it's cool. so cliche it's so yeah. like american cliche but we'll see. Like we, we can't we can't right. judge maybe they're they're just steering us that way with yeah. the trailers and so i want to watch it only for that not theaters but i'll definitely watch it for that and the rest was all yeah like i, I was expecting when i watch horror films usually i get like a ton of horror trailers right. but i got like basically disney trailers the whole time <laughs> yeah. i got well Mufasa, it's a disney got, property uh, right it is yeah. yeah i got captain america i got joker Oh yeah, I got Captain America too. Yeah, I got Captain America too. Which so, Harrison Ford, huh? He's playing like some fucking Hulk, Red Hulk or something. Yeah, yeah. he's like, just taking over from a deceased actor. But yeah, gotcha. it's, uh, yeah, it was just I. I guess I was expecting more horror trailers, like I did for Long Legs and, uh, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Let me see like that still. Let me see that still. Anyway. All right. What is uh what is Letterbox thing? Letterbox. You got, yes. I know you got it queued up. I already got it. I do. I do have a queued you up. A softball right now. I was ready. Um. <laughs> so yeah, there. Uh, Letterbox pretty much right there with us, pretty close. Currently sitting at a three point seven. Okay. Out of five yeah. over on Letterbox. It's doing well though. Eighty million budget. Uh, pulled yeah, it's in killing 10, it. One hundred eight so far. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, well. I'm sure they, they spent a lot on marketing, but it's definitely going to make its money back and then mm -hmm. and and then some. So. That's yeah. awesome. It's great for horror. So oh, yeah. I'm excited. All right. Are we ranking them? Yes. Uh, let's uh, rank them. I already got mine up. So I don't know if you want to wait. Go right, ahead. I'll, I'll start with mine. All right. So yeah, alien rankings. This is what I have currently. Uh, I'll go from best to worst. So obviously I got alien at the top, followed by aliens and then Prometheus. I am a big Prometheus fan. I know a lot of people shit on that one, but I, I love that one. And then I'm going to go Romulus. I'm going to go Romulus fourth, and then I will go Alien Resurrection, Alien 3, and worst, Alien Covenant. 
Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to be a little bit different. I'm going Aliens, because I love that one, followed by Alien, Alien Romulus, Prometheus, and uh, I don't know if you want to add your Alien vs. Predator films, Joe, but I got no, Alien vs. Predator 1, Alien 3, Alien Covenant, Alien Resurrection, and Alien vs. Predator 2, Requiem. 10 out of 10, no notes. I am exactly the same as the Todd. So All right. <laughs> I was Always. like, Rachel, I'm like, Jesus, like, he's reading, reading my list, you know? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, in my mind. Yeah, and Alien vs. Predator 2 could have been good if we saw anything, so... Mm-hmm. That's, uh, yeah, like, what's happening know, in this movie? You know, what's like, happening? It's uh, so dark. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've i actually never seen AVP 2. Uh, I, don't, I, yeah, don't I don't even, you'll yeah, never I, see AVP 2. There's no, <laughs> right. there's no way to see AVP <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I'll be, I'd put AVP somewhere. Above. I liked AVP I'd probably lot. put it above like Resurrection or right in that same realm. So it wouldn't be higher than Romulus or anything like that. So, all right. So you guys get Romulus at three and I get it at four in this yep. franchise. Yep. Right. I, I also, Prometheus is two. I, I agree. Underrated. And that might be a good mm-hmm. for, one for us to talk about one day. Yeah. I think it'd, I think it'd yeah. be a great discussion. Yeah. Definitely one. Covenant, yeah. not so much. Nope. No. <laughs> definitely not. All righty, gentlemen, I think that's going to do it then for this week's episode. We hope you enjoyed our review of Alien Romulus. Go and check it out in theaters if you can. If not, it'll probably be out in a month or so on VOD, like everything's been happening these days. In the meantime, next week, what do we got, Steve? Uh, Probably for real, maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Uh, Blade, the original film with uh, Wesley Snipes from the late 90s. Uh, Just thought it would be a fun Kind of movie to watch you know we've never done a superhero horror film before and it's got some pretty cool stuff you know vampires and stuff like that so i i think it'll be a fun one to discuss so that'll be next week's review daywalker oh i like that lovely thank you thank you uh yeah so go and check out a blade for next week of course 1998's blade starring wesley snipes uh, currently, I don't know if it's streaming anywhere, but I I do see uh, Hulu or with Disney Plus. Yeah, I mean, I also see it's like the low low price of two ninety nine over on Amazon Prime as well. If you want to check it out, but I'm sure it's definitely streaming somewhere or the other. So go and check it out for next week. In the meantime, you can keep up with the podcast on our socials: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads. Just search the Horror Squad Podcast. You can also email us anytime: the Horror Squad Podcast at gmail dot com. But the absolute best way to keep up the podcast is our Discord, completely free to join. It is linked over on our Instagram, or you can send us an email or a DM, and we'll send you that link to join our Discord. A bunch of amazing channels over there to sift through. We have Movie Club every single month, which is coming up very soon. Steve, did you guys pick a movie yet? Uh, we did. It's going to be Jennifer's Body. So nice. Something we've reviewed on the podcast before, so it should be a, a fun rewatch for me anyway. Excellent. So yeah, so the way Movie Club works is Steve sends a link out every single month, and then uh, it's through Zoom, and you can either be on camera or not if you're a little camera shy, and you watch the movie with fellow horror fans. It's a lot of fun. Also, we are all also doing uh, a lot of behind the scenes stuff over on the Discord. It's it's like I said, it's just the it's the best way to keep up the podcast. So join that Discord. Uh, also, do not forget to leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast app. That helps the podcast grow for sure, so we would appreciate that. Or if you'd like to buy merch, tpublic.com. Just search the Horror Squad Podcast. That's also linked uh, over. That shop is also linked over on our Instagram if you'd like to buy some merch. Oh, don't forget important dates. Of course, October 11th through the 13th, our Hocus Pocus weekend. Last event, uh, most likely of the year, um, next year. I'm sure we're going to plan some sort of meetup like we did with our Mon- Monroeville. Monroeville. Yeah. I'm sure we'll be playing something similar to that for next year. And then uh, hopefully some other events, but come and join us. Uh, it's just a bunch of Halloween weekend. It's just a bunch of Halloween.com for all details regarding that. And that's it folks. So we'll see you next week for blade. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.